So how are we all today? So this is the knitting seminar, right, I think? No? Yeah, well, okay. not for me, it isn't, I'll tell you. <laughs> so, of course, it's the Terry Brooks Q&A. Let's give a round of applause for Terry Brooks, everyone. Let me just quickly say that if any of you have been standing in line at 145 for me to sign your books, I apologize. I didn't know anything about this, but I'll make it up to you over the next two days. Promise. So, uh, so how this Q&A works is we've got a mic set up right there, and then anyone who wants to can quickly come up, and we'll, uh, he'll take your questions, we'll go through them one by one, and ask, it, ask your heart desire. The way you may not be able to put it that way. Yeah, well. Watch it there, I don't know. <laughs> so it's actually interesting, I was talking with some friends, and we were talking about what uh, our first books were we read by certain big name authors. And um, with, the, with your name, a lot of people came up with a Landover series, and uh, the mm -hmm. Kingdom for Sale sold, and of course, uh, Swords of Sun Okay, just did this, Shinara. That's good. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we had this discussion because everybody says Shinara, and um, I've, I've, I said a long time ago that I, I don't have any claim to the pronunciations. I never pretended that that was of importance to me. The way I say it is Shannara, but I don't actually care. Uh, outside of the audio interpretations that are published, how anyone says it. So you can stick with Shannara if you want. Shannara. Sh Shannara. <laughs> yeah, so okay. there you go. <laughs> but no, actually, the first book I myself read of yours, I was uh, 14, and of course, Phantom Menace was just coming out. Oh. And I bought the hardcover copy of the, no the novelization you did for episode one, Phantom Menace. And that's what got you, me... Wait a minute, you only bought one? <laughs> it came in three, four different, three or four different covers. I was uh, 14. My mom would only let me get one. I, okay. She couldn't let me buy four <laughs> of the same book. Uh, I always wondered how many people bought. I'm thinking, oh, maybe there's a different story in each one. <laughs> no. Anyway, yeah. Uh, that was a good experience. Um, even though I'd sworn I was never going to do another novelization after Hook, uh, when George Lucas called up and, uh, and, and, they, and said, well, this is who we want, and... My publisher says, well, do you want to do this? And my first response was, no. And then I thought to myself, oh, she says, you should think this over, perhaps overnight. And I went home and thought about what my kids would say if I turned it down and how they would disown me and throw me bodily through the door. So uh, <laughs> uh, it, came, it, became a, a clear, uh, it, it became clear to me, at least, that maybe it would be a good idea if I rethought the whole thing. And it worked out really well. All right, so again, anyone has any questions, this is the time. Feel free to jump up, ask away, and first Hi. question. Hey, how's it going? Um, hey. I have a list of questions. I'm only going to ask one right now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Um, I've been a fan of your work for the last 20 years of my life. Um, I've got all of your books. Uh, they have a, their own spot on my shelf. Nothing else goes near it. Um, the question that I have is regarding the bridge between the Word and the Void series and the Shannara series. Mm -hmm. When you were originally writing uh, Armageddon's Children, did you know then that you were going to make the bridge? No. Because, oh, sorry. No, to answer that question, it, it, the. I'd love to tell you that I think that far ahead about my life, but uh, it doesn't really work that way. And what happens is, is the writing tells you what needs to happen. Uh, I finish one book, it tells me what the next book needs to be almost without fail. Um, so I don't, I don't think that far ahead. When I have groups of books, then I think about what that group is going to result in overall. But uh, the, and from beginning to end, but then in between, you know, there's a lot of gray area there. And when I finished Night of the when I finished uh, Angel Fire East, um, I thought I didn't even think I would necessarily go back into it because uh, it was a complete set that was never intended to be more than those three books. But I said if I did go back into it, I would go into it in the dreams of the Knights of the Word, uh, where the world in fact had lapsed into a demon-controlled uh, situation, and uh, that uh, that would be you know it would be a dark and terrible thing. And I put it aside and forgot all about it. Um, and then um, I wrote a bunch of Shannara books, and then I started thinking about, because you, you people, readers, uh, have been asking for years at that point, 
well, are you ever going to write about what happened during the time of the Great Wars, and are you ever going to go back in time rather than just keeping going forward? And it occurred to me that, uh, well, you know, if I wrote about the Knights of the Word, this, you know, at, it's awful, that world is awfully very much the same as, as what the Shannara world was. And I talked to my editor about it, and I said, what if I connected these two? You know, how would you feel about that? And she said, well, you know, write 100 pages and see how it feels to you. I said, 100 pages, huh? <laughs> yeah, it will be easy for you to say. But I did try it, and it was, it was instantly, for me, uh, comfortable, and it felt right. So uh, I expanded uh, Genesis of Shannara into the f first trilogy of that pre-world and uh, brought forward the history of the Knights of the Word without directly connecting the two uh, in any measurable way. So I, I didn't think about it ahead of time. Uh, even though it might have seemed that way, I didn't think about it till I got there. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. yeah there was a lot of uh, stuff in the original trilogy uh, that you had, like just phrasing, I guess, mm -hmm. that uh, after I read the Night of the Word trilogy, or the Word and the Void trilogy, I was like, is this gonna, is this gonna work into it? And then you bridged it and I was very, very pleased. Well, I have to say that the trick in these, this thing where you go back and forth like I do with this uh, generational saga business, uh, it was the same problem I faced when I did uh, First King of Shannara, which went back in time. Well, you have to make it seamless with what you've already written. Unfortunately, readers notice if you don't make it seamless. Um, so you just can't go out there and throw a bunch of stuff in there and, and not have uh, it feel as if it's actually a prequel in some reasonable fashion. And that's the toughest part about writing something in, in a world that you've already written in extensively. And that's why I don't particularly like going back and writing about that, even though you know I'm probably going to do it. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Hi. Um, Hi. This is sort of a personal question. Um, do you Stop see there. yourself? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's more about like your characters. Do you see yourself as more of like a druid character like Alanon or Walker Bow, or do you see yourself as more of one of the people who ends up going on the quest like Shay or Flick or whatever? Yeah, you know, I'm mostly a spider gnome kind of guy. <laughs> I creep around a lot behind the scenes and peer over at rocks and um, I, I don't know. I, I think there's a little bit of a, of a writer in, in most of the characters that they're writing. Um, that is certainly true for me. I identify with all the characters, even the, even the really evil ones. Uh, you have to have a sensibility for what they're, what they're like and what they're doing. Um, you have to feel comfortable with who they are uh, in your mind when you're writing about them so that you don't you know, flail around. Um, I don't know, uh, you know, I suppose authors are kind of like those druids, those knowledge givers, um, and you, uh, you're, you're giving the knowledge out uh, by controlling everything in the book uh, and how it's put together. Uh, that's what writers do. Um, I, I think I sort of always felt like I'm like an Olmsford. I'm like everybody. You're, like, you're every man. And uh, you don't, you, you're just sort of going along in a, in a situation where you're trying to get out of it and uh, uh, maybe with minimal damage to yourself. Uh, and that's kind of what I think about the way we mostly go through life, um, is uh, trying to uh, deal with the uh, issues and difficulties that aren't of our making and that we're somehow saddled with. Uh, and uh, that can come from any number of directions and we have to find our way through it. And one more quick one. Um, I'm not gonna ask you what your favorite book you've written is because that's Thank you. so difficult to choose. Because I won't answer that one. Which, which of the sort of adventures would you most like to participate in? You know, um, I'm living the adventure I want to participate in. Um, I live in an adventure world every day of my life. Um, I am immersed in writing. I'm immersed in stories uh, and storytelling. Um, I get to be a writer uh, who is not only read, but fairly well acclaimed and, and certainly well paid for the effort. Um, to me, that's a great adventure. and. Uh, Luckily, I have uh, a terrific uh, uh, partner in my life uh, that took me a while to find. Uh, I have uh, a family uh, that's uh, very supportive. Um, I don't know what more you can ask for. I've had a tremendous amount of luck. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Alcon!